Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another episode of Patsy Rates Cars. Now in case you're new to the channel or new to this feature, basically what I do is I get my, my wife to, to rate a car uh, from a passenger's perspective and to see what she thinks of it. So with that in mind, come on down Patsy. Oh, hello. And in case you're, you're really interested, today's a special day because it's our wedding anniversary. Aww. And there we are, so I've, I've got her helping me to film a car, aren't I romantic? He's cooking me a nice dinner later though. That is true. Anyway, we digress. So, this week <coughs> I've got the very sophisticated Audi A5. Right, take it away. What do you think? Uh, mm, bit heavy to take it away, I'm afraid. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I've had to put up with this for 12 years, <laughs> seven, of which, seven of which have been married. Oh, how do I do it? <laughs> it's the medication. Yeah. Prescription, next prescription is ready. Got to remember to pick that up. Anyway, you're making me digress again. Um, so the front end of this reminds me quite nicely of the new TT. Mm, yeah, I can sort of see uh, uh, what you mean. Okay. Um, and I prefer more hot hatch Audis. I'm not, it takes a lot for a coupe or a saloon or a state to impress me. Okay. This car does. Oh, good to hear. So, Audi will be delighted. The main things I really love, and it, again, it's something really simple, is there's so much kind of structure and muscular form to the, mm. to the car and the bonnet. Mm. These. I just love how this dips here. Like you can, it's visible. On certain cars, it's not as visible. But I love how this is kind of. It's got lovely sharp lines, has not it? It does. And if this was just a flat bonnet, I don't think the front would look as good. So side on, this car is very sleek, very sophisticated, very eye catching. Yeah. Now, I love these alloys. I know. I know you put on your Instagram a poll because you wasn't too sure. Um, I. There's the one thing I am going to say. Now, it doesn't bother me, but I think the main reason why people may not like it is they're not exactly spokes, but you know what I mean? It, it well, seems it, well, too, it seems a bit clustered. There seems to be too many. For me, the reason why I'm not keen on them is because I think they look <laughs> a bit plain. And I'm sorry, they are, those alloys are over a thousand pounds. What? Yeah, they're, they're over a thousand pounds. Optional extra. Then no, I don't like them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. Right. Um, Let's quickly walk around to the back because uh, the rain is say, getting I heavier. Do, I do. I've got no hair to get messy, so it's all right. I do like the um, kind of the black side skirt, the trim. I yeah. think it just adds a little sporty touch. Yeah, it does look quite nice, uh, now, contrasting the uh, tango red paintwork. Now, the, 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 the thing is, now I'm going to probably be shot down for this, but unless it's a hot hatch Audi, I don't like the back of Audis, or I, unless it's a TT. I think it looks quite nice. I like it. Um, I don't. I don't really think there's an angle where this car ouch. looks bad. Ah, stinging nettles. Yeah, be careful. Right, what do you think of the interior? I really like the interior. It feels like I have just been picked up by my chauffeur or someone who, like, I'm in an important job or something, and I've just been been picked up from a, a high end meeting in the centre of London, and it's premium. It's nice, isn't it? It's a premium, but you feel like you're stepping into something that's not just your standard car. Well, it, yeah, it was just, yeah. Uh, I get, know, I get what you mean. Yeah, it's definitely. Let me come in, so I'm starting to get quite wet. It's definitely premium. I feel. I don't feel like I'm worthy to be in a car like this. Okay. As, in, as in, I feel. I feel in this car, I feel more important than I am. Let's put it like that. You're very important to me. Oh, that's love right there, that is. So let's talk about uh, the technology because there's a lot of it in here. There is. Um, the virtual cockpit is just something else. I, I, oh, I love so it. nice, isn't it? it, it Audi, that is, um, that is, it blows my mind, it's amazing. It is one thing I love about an Audi car. Now, talking of equipment, there's one or two things in here which I first thought a mm, bit gimmicky, but like, like what? But I've come to really appreciate it. Obviously, it done it when we first got in the car. Hand your seatbelt to you. Yes. Now that's good for someone like me, for example, where you're, what without, you're lazy. 
<laughs> I was going to say, it's a bit harder for me to kind of turn or twist my neck to get to pull the thing. Yeah. Um, well, for obvious reasons, but... Well, ob- obvious to us. Obvious to us, yeah. Um, but I just, I like how it hands it to you. It, it just makes it a little bit more pleasant. Yeah, so let me try and demonstrate it for you guys. So, oh, it's a bit awkward to do. <laughs> There we are, and it passes my seatbelt to me. Thank you, Jeeves. Thank you very much. Oh, whatever Unless... happened to Ask Jeeves? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I really love that. Um, I love the fact that there's a lot in here, but it's kind of, it's disguised in like a really posh, premium kind of mm. kind of cover. As but What I mean by that is just the inside of the doors. I could stroke. It's very, very satisfying. Okay. Um, and again, everyone's going to love me for this because I say it in every video. It's soft touch. Yay! It's soft touch. Um, it, it ought to be for the price this car costs. But yeah, the, the design, the styling, where everything is positioned, the layout, it's it's premium. It's lush. Yeah, it's, it's very nice indeed. Uh, right, so... Away in the Audi A5 Coupe. Mm. Very nasty weather. Uh, in case you're wondering, this car doesn't have uh, Quattro, uh, all, Quattro all wheel drive. Uh, this car has got front wheel drive. But I don't think we're going to have any real issues today, anyway, are we? No, you're not going to be a hooligan. No, well, this car, although it's pretty fast, it's not really the kind of car that you enjoy driving fast. It's um, a sit back and relax it, kind of drive car. Yeah, it's a cruiser. Yeah. Um, so this particular car is powered by a two litre turbocharged diesel four cylinder, which has 187 brake horsepower with uh, 400. Bloody hell. That was the uh, Audi autonomous emergency braking, which scared the <laughs> crap out of me. Uh, basically, it thought, it, it thought I was about to hit those cyclists, which I wasn't. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that woke me up. Um, <laughs> well, it works. It does work, yeah. They're too well. It's too efficient. Um, yes, yeah, so this engine also has 400 newton meters of torque. That means you'll hit 62 miles per hour in just 7.7 .7 seconds, which is pretty, pretty respectable. And it's got a top speed of 146 miles per hour. So it makes decent yeah. progress, doesn't it? It feels nippy respon and very responsive. Yeah. So I, I mean, I didn't know what to expect. Obviously it's an S line, so I didn't really know what to expect from this car. Like, would it be nippy? Would it be responsive? Or would it be more kind of like relaxed and and just not as eager to get going but mm. it, it it's not it's definitely responsive i mean uh, yeah. as a passenger i i feel the car respond i don't feel that with i don't feel it with every car but what i mean by that is i when you put your foot down i can feel the car responding yeah and even in efficiency mode which is what i've got it in now it's still quite responsive obviously it's not quite as alert and eager as if you were to pop it into dynamic mode so i've got five driving modes to choose from uh actually i've, I've, I've forgotten them uh efficiency comfort auto dynamic and individual so let's pop it into dynamic although we haven't really got the weather for it like i say this car hasn't got the quattro all-wheel drive but yeah, in dynamic mode, it does make progress really, really well. In case you're wondering, this engine uh, engine is mated to a seven-speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox, but you can have a six-speed manual gearbox if you so desire. However, what I will say is this S-Tronic gearbox is really, really good, and it really suits the character of this car so i would probably recommend you to get an automatic which <gasps> i know I, i'm a big hang man. on hang on hold up can you just repeat the last thing you said just oh. so we can clarify that's what you said i would recommend you to get an automatic 
Well, so guys, I've heard it all now. In guys, in, in case you don't know, can you even see us? It's so dark in here. Um, in case you don't know, I'm a massive fan of manual gearboxes. So for me to say you should get the automatic is, it almost feels like sacrilege. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, all joking aside, this S-Tronic gearbox is simply fantastic. It works very well. You can barely notice the changes. Now, obviously, this car, one of its largest kind of areas, its strength is, of course, comfort. So, obviously, that's quite a big element for you as a passenger. So, what do you think of comfort? I could fall asleep. It's, it's, very, it's very comfortable, isn't it? it? One thing I find with... I'm really picky with comfort. Mm. And one thing with these seats that I really like is the fact that I can control the lumbar support and that is one thing I I think more cars should have now I know on some cars it's probably an optional extra I get that but I really like the fact that I can change my lumbar support I can change the height of my seat I can pretty much get as comfortable as I want in these seats they are they're very they're very kind of comfortable around and supportive around kind of the ribs and the hips yeah it's not too much bolstering but it's enough to make you feel secure but still be comfortable it's a good compromise yeah um and they don't feel too firm they feel firm enough to feel supportive but soft enough to be comfortable still well i can't actually think of anything i would change in here or anything that i don't like yeah, it, it's funny because when I first stepped in here, I thought there were too many buttons. Um, okay. You know, you know, I quite like, like my interiors to be stripped back, although okay. the problem with, with some cars such as Peugeot is that everything's accessed via a touchscreen, whereas I still like to have physical controls for air conditioning. You still or, like to be or, able to feel control. what you're doing. Well, when it comes to climate control, yes. Yes, I get that, um, I understand. But, going back to the Audi, but when you've spent some time in here, you realize that, that the amount of buttons is just right, it's spot on. Not too many, but not too little. And the ergonomics in here is fantastic. Everything is where you would expect it to be, where you need it to be, and it, it just works effortlessly. It really does. Um, it's a fantastic cabin, and it's clear that a lot of thought has gone, in, gone into it. I was just about to say, it's, it's, it's very obvious that thought has gone into where things should be, yeah. the, the, the gaps between things, um, why that, say, that button should be there instead of this one. It's all, e for, the dry, for a, a driver, everything is within acceptable like reach and yeah. distance. You're not having to lean a, f a far distance and, and kind of move out of your seat to reach something. Exactly, and plus because um, this isn't a touch screen and you access all of the controls via this little rotary dial, it's easier to operate when you're moving. Um, it does take getting used to when you've, when you've become uh, accustomed to a, a touch screen of course, but it does, it does make sense because it means that can operate it easily you're not having to kind of make sure you aim your aim your finger right although this car's smooth anyway so you don't need to worry about such things but yeah using a rotary dial does make sense it, it does make it uh, a little bit easier and I quite like that that click it sounds silly but satisfying it just sounds it just sounds pleasant so crunch time Oh, I haven't had time to think of the score. What? We've been driving for. Oh, okay. Talk oh, about man. something else for two minutes while I have a think. Right, okay. So before Patsy gives her overall rating, it's about time I do my disclaimer, which I should have done at the start. So, <clears throat> we may share the same surname, but that doesn't necessarily mean we share the same opinions or views. So with that in mind, Patsy's thoughts are purely her own and do not necessarily reflect mine or indeed car obsession. That sounded really official. Uh, have you got a score for me yet? I have. Why am I slowing down to 35? It's 60 down here. What's wrong with Oh, me? you moan at the people that do I that know. and now you're doing it. That's what I mean. It, you know, this car, it, it's, it's just better when you're cruising. That's what I mean. It, 
it just feels more pleasurable when you cruise rather than when you're you know, trying to chase down every apex. At some point, we may have a score. Oh, sorry, I was waiting for you to. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm actually finding it quite hard to, to. to I'm stuck between two scores. And right, I'm okay. quite finding it quite hard. I mean, well, what two scores are you stuck between? Three and a half and four. Okay. You've, you've had nothing but good things to say about this car, and you. you, you but there's things I'd improve. Like. So. Oh, see now I can't think of anything to justify it. Exactly. That's what I mean. You, you've had pretty much nothing but good things to say about this car. They are. I might give it a three and a half, maybe a four. Can but, I separate my score up? Because I. No, bear with me on this because this is why. So. I'm going to separate it into two. One being. Taking aside how I feel of the. how, Taking aside how I. My thoughts of the car. Right, okay. I would, I would, if I was in the market for an executive suite and I was in that sort of market and I wanted that sort of car, five out of five easy. Right, okay. The only, and then I would separate it. So the only reason why I would separate this then down to a four would be, one, I, I would want something a bit sportier. So I would go for like the S5. See, see, I, I personally think to mark it down for that is quite unfair because, like you just said, you can have an S5, or of course you can have an RS5. This car isn't, this car isn't really designed to be the most dynamic out of the range because obviously you've got other cars that cater for that range. Okay, taking aside then, what, why I wouldn't want this car? Mm. I can't not give it a five. Let's put it like this: if I was in the market for this sort of car. There's nothing I can fault. So taking aside, would I buy this car? No. But that's not because it's bad. It's because it's not my type of car. Mm. I would go for an RS5. I think it's time to, to end uh, this video. I'm not getting back out this car. I know. This, this weather is simply awful. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time uh, I, or indeed Patsy and I, make a video. Plus, you'll uh, be kept up to date with the latest PRC episode. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more Car, Car Obsession. Obsession. High five. High five. Yeah.